want to do that, do that very thing. So I will say to y'all what I say at every event we have at Nash Community College, and that is great evening. Notice I didn't say good evening. I didn't hear anything back. Great evening. So at Nash Community College, things are not good. They're great. And so saying good evening just doesn't cut it. So I am Lou Honeycutt. I'm honored to be the president of this incredible institution. And officially, I have to do my official thing or I can't get paid. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and students at National Community College, welcome to campus. My hope is you'll finish early enough where you can drive around campus. Everyone in the world has been in this building. But it is amazing when I do VIP tours and take people in golf carts around. They're like, I know you had that. I know you had that. I know you had that. We have an incredible 125 acre campus. We serve over 20,000 students a year in our program. And we have all kinds of new things happening. Our driver training center is about to open adjacent to campus. We just opened a veterinary medical technology annex. So a lot of great things are happening at Nash Community College. And I will tell you, for the first time, I've been here since November of 2019. Remember what happened right after that, the little thing called COVID? So my entire presidency has been COVID. And because of that, in, in the team meetings we've had and the other meetings we've had, We've had to also always talk about our enrollment drop. We were like every other college in the nation, COVID, we had a COVID hole for enrollment. I'm really proud to tell you that I just got to tell the team today, our enrollment is up over 10% this fall. So we're very, very proud of that. So with that said, I will get out of your hair. Now here's the thing, I can stay and eat Chick-fil-A with y'all, or I have friends from out of town that want to go to Prime Smokehouse, so I'm really sorry. Oh. But I'm, I'm going to go eat with them. So I just want to, otherwise, I'd stay here with y'all and be here. But welcome to campus. We, we are so glad you're here. And I will bring up Pastor Andrew Barcliffe, and he will bless the whole thing. So, thank you. Thank you. Would you pray with me? Father God, we acknowledge your presence in this room with us right now, and you as God over all. Now we recognize that you are the provider of everything we need, so with that in mind, we say thank you for our food, thank you that you provide for our needs, and may it be used to bless and nourish our bodies. Father God, your word tells us that you are the giver of wisdom, and if we ask, you give generously. And so, Father God, in our conversations and discussion this evening, folks, as we look at safety in our community and traffic, Lord, I pray that you grant wisdom as your word promises. May your spirit fill this room. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend, and thank you, Dr. Honeycutt. We are grateful for the opportunity to be here tonight in this wonderful facility. My name is Mark Ezel. I'm the director of the North Carolina Governor's Highway Safety Program. And on behalf of Governor Roy Cooper, I want to welcome everybody here to this Traffic Safety Forum. This is an opportunity for folks around Nash County to talk about some of the issues that they're concerned with around traffic safety. You know, in North Carolina, we are averaging over 1,400 fatalities in this state. You know, as a result of traffic crashes. That is incredible. Every single one of those crashes is not just one victim. There's a blast radius of these things. There's a victim, there's a family, there's a community, there are co-workers, there are neighbors, all of whom are hurt when someone else is hurt and all of whom have a little piece of themselves die when someone passes away in a traffic crash. So it's a significant issue that we've obviously got to do a lot about. There's an average in Nash County of 25 crashes a year, or 25 fatalities rather, a year. People who have died on Nash County roads as a result of traffic crashes. Um, and that pales in comparison to the number of serious injuries that we see. We see about 1,250 injuries in Nash County 
as a result of traffic crashes. So there's a lot that clearly needs to be done. It is a major public health issue in this state and in this county. What it's going to require really is all of us. It's going to require our communities really changing the way they think about traffic safety. And it's going to require creating systems that are geared towards safety. In other countries, in other countries, they are seeing a decrease in traffic crashes and fatalities. In the United States, we're seeing an increase. Less since COVID, thankfully, the COVID years were awful for traffic safety, as our enforcement folks will tell you. It's gotten a little bit better since then, but it really hasn't come close to getting as uh, to being as positive as it was prior to 2020. So when you think about some of those other countries that are addressing this successfully, you wonder, well, what are they doing that we're not? And the fact is they are creating systems that are based on safety and use safety as the bottom line. Here's an example. In Sweden and in Finland, they have reduced crashes, crash fatalities to almost zero. And you're like, there's no way we can do that in the United States. Come on, that, that's impossible. Well, think about it like this. When I was growing up in Rocky Mountain, in Inglewood, no less, I would read the National Graphic. And the National Graphic wouldn't print this as much because it was always relentlessly focused on local stuff, which is part of what I love about the paper. But you'd read in papers, the Telegram, News Observer, others, about plane crashes. When I was growing up in the 70s and 80s around here, it would not be uncommon every month to hear of a plane crash where 400 people were killed, 250 people were killed, or 500 people were killed. It was fairly constant. Well, the fact is, we hadn't had a jet passenger crash in this country in 16 years. Now, how did that happen? That's just not by accident. It happened because they have put in the airline industry systems together which make crashes so unlikely. Redundant systems that have reduced jet passenger crashes to zero in this country. And they've done that because industry, regulators, pilots, other workers with airlines, industry executives, designers, and those who use jets said, enough's enough. And we're going to come together and create these redundant systems that will decrease, if not eliminate, jet passenger crashes. And it's worked. So nobody can tell me that it can't be done. It's going to be difficult. Nobody can also tell me that jet passenger, that being on a, on a plane these days is is convenient. It's not convenient the way it may have been in previous years, but it is statistically safer than sitting in your own den. So that says something. That's my dream for where we get in this state. That's where I want us to get is to zero, but we can't do it without getting your thoughts and getting your advice and feedback. Oftentimes, folks from Raleigh will come to places and say, this is what we're planning on doing. We wanted to come here and tell you. Governor's Highway Safety Program, what we want to do is really reverse that process. We want you to tell us what you'd like us to do. And then we're going to do the best that we can to help fund that and make a difference. Now, we can't do this alone. The Governor's Highway Safety Program, our funding can only address behavioral issues, issues around education, our enforcement, or 
uh, public health, things of that nature. We are not the design folks. Fortunately, we have the DOT folks with this division who are the designers here, who are also in a position to get this feedback, get this feedback uh, back to their work as well. So if you have other suggestions during the course of this discussion, there are things that we can't address. We know the folks that can, and we will take that back. So it's going to be a really exciting session. I'm really excited to have you all here. I've also got another facilitator here that I'm going to call on now, Dr. Holly Whistler, who works here at Nash Community College, where she's a professor. She's going to help facilitate this event. So, Dr. Whistler, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, neighbors, to Nash Community College. I've actually worked um, at Nash Community College since I was here on the transplant. I came here from Virginia in uh, 2009. Um, and I can tell you that Nash County is an amazing place to live. Nash Community College is an amazing place to work. One of my favorite things about Nash Community College is the trail. Has anybody run the trail or walked the trail? It's pretty phenomenal. Um, it's one of my favorite things about the college. Um, I currently teach uh, in the education department here at Nash Community College while also chairing the Cooley Library Board and coaching youth soccer. So I'm very invested in our youth here in the community. I had the pleasure uh, to meet Dr. Cheryl Leonard, uh, who connected me with this event for a mutual friend nearly a decade ago. Um, and she and I have been lifelong public servants. We wanted to do it at a community event for a long time. And so thank you, Cheryl, for the invite. One of the things I want to remind everyone of is that we're neighbors, right? We all live here, we travel here, we shop here. Um, ensuring that my neighbors, you guys, travel our highway safely is at the front of my mind for two reasons. Number one, my husband is a paramedic. He works on an ambulance. He responds every day to crashes. And I used to worry a lot, especially when my kids were young, was is he going to get hit by somebody just speed along, right? Not paying attention, not uh, seeing the hazard ahead of them. Um, and I also have two children. They're both teenagers. They attend school here, and they will be driving soon. And so we've started early with teaching them things like road signs, pulling over for the police, those sorts of things. Um, and as such, Mark shared some statistics uh, with me, and there were two that really stood out as a wife and a mother. So from 2020 to 2024, nearly 2,000 young people in Nash County were injured in a collision. So these are young drivers. Right, students who are just getting out there, learning how to drive very inexperienced. And I immediately thought about my two teenagers who are going to be driving soon. Are they going to be the victim of one of those statistics? The other, other statistic was that between 2020 and 2024, there were nearly 6,000 injuries on a highway in Nash County. And I immediately thought about the first responders, like my husband, who get there first, who are trying to save someone's life, while motorists are just haphazardly bebopping along the highway, not paying attention to what's ahead of them. So I hope tonight that we are able to listen to the experts, use the information that they give us to reflect on our own habits, and understand how to encourage each other and those who live in our neighborhoods to be mindful of the road. So with that in mind, I would like to transition to someone who's probably very famous um, among uh, Nash County. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ken Moore, who's an emergency department attending physician, and I can tell you he's phenomenal. When I first moved here, he was, of course he remembers me, right? He was uh, he was working that night, and my daughter had like a 104 fever, and I was a new mom, and I brought her in, and um, he just gave me a lot of reassurance. He has an amazing bedside manner, and I can't imagine anyone better to talk about um, um, this, this topic than, than Dr. Moore. So anyway, Dr. Moore. Please forgive me, I'm a little bit uh, impaired here. Can everybody hear me all right? Very good. All right. Excellent. Excellent. But thank you for the introduction. I appreciate that. I also am a transplant. I moved here with my family 26 years ago from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But I've raised my family here in Rocky Mountain. And 
I have enjoyed every minute of it. We have not thought about moving back. At least I haven't. Neither has my wife. Our kids have other ideas. Um, I am part of the wake emergency physician group at work in the emergency department at UNC Health Nash. Um, I'm also the medical director for emergency medical services for Nash County. So the ambulances, the paramedics that you see here, I work with them. They're a talented um, bunch, and I'm very glad to see uh, them out there because they're doing a wonderful job for our community. Now, community discussions like this with representatives from the Governor's Highway Safety Program give feedback and general ideas on the complex issue of reducing traffic crashes. Quite simply, reducing crashes reduces injuries. It's very simple. That's not a tough equation, although it gets a little bit more complex and nuanced. So I'm here to give my perspective as an emergency physician on the issue of traffic crashes in our community, that is Rocky Mountain, Nash County. But let's start off with a broader view. In 2021, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, as we call NHTSA, reported that in the United States, there were over 42,000 fatalities due to motor vehicle crashes. That was in 2021. We've already heard from our previous speakers that specifically, crashes have actually been on the increase. As of mid-2024, Nash County has reported a noticeable increase in the number of traffic accidents compared with previous years. This rise is part of a broader trend that is seen across our state, as we mentioned previously. The primary causes of these accidents include distracted driving, those who are using texting, they are changing radio, eating, having an argument with somebody in the back seat, or after dropping something, going to pick it up, speeding, wrong way drivers, that is someone going up an exit ramp, and driving under the influence. It could be illicit substances, but I'd also like to broaden that to make sure that everybody understands that that also includes prescription as well as non-prescription medications because people who are taking some antihistamine, Benadryl, um, can cause drowsiness. People who are fatigued if we're taking those medications can also suffer from the drowsiness and impair and not even realize it. Prescription medications such as Phenergan for nausea or muscle relaxers can also impair the driver and they may not be aware of it. So those who are taking medications obviously should have a conversation with their providers about this before taking taking them. In Rocky Mount last year, our emergency department treated about 2,000 patients from traffic accidents. That's about, that's a bit over 150 patients per month. Now, injuries range from whiplash injuries, bruises, scrapes, to um, what I like to call less, not quite life-threatening injuries to actually light ending <laughs> events. The My EMS crews each year, treating and transporting patients to the emergency department, primarily Nash emergency department, but we have a few that go to Wakehead, depending on what part of the county uh, the accident occurs. And there are some who are actually hot loaded from the scene into a helicopter and flown to our area trauma center in Greenville. Each of us in this room, as was previously alluded to by Ms. Whistler, knows someone who's been affected by a traffic accident. A friend, a neighbor, a fellow church member, a co-worker, a work colleague. So this issue can be front and center in our daily lives. There are those whose lives have been cut short or whose careers or relationships have been affected by traffic accidents. Some of these incidents are actually invisible. Traumatic brain injury, chronic pain, anxiety, depression after an accident. Those are things that you don't necessarily see but can affect relationships and the patient, obviously. Last year, our community lost a very bright, young, 
your nose and throat doctor. She had just finished her training, had a baby, and was starting to practice when she was killed in a traffic accident here in town. So I and my colleagues in the emergency department and with EMS are poised not only to provide care for patients, but also to connect with our community. We are resource advocates, and we want to work with you to develop prevention strategies. You know, as Mr. Zell had alluded to earlier, you know, the governor's mission works with behavioral changes, which are very difficult, but they're also structural things that I'm sure with brainstorming, we're all going to be able to get to tonight. Um, for example, we already have traffic calming strategies like median barriers, rumble strips, uh, speed bumps, and who could forget what we just recently started having those roundabouts. <laughs> uh, as annoying as some of these may seem to everyone, the documentation does show that it has reduced the number of injuries and fatalities since they've been implemented. So with that, I'm certain there are many more strategies that we might come up with tonight as we brainstorm. And not all may be right for our area, but we need to get started. Let's start here at that. And so I'd like to turn this over to my next speaker. Thank you. Okay. Again, give me a minute here. Doctor, thank you very much, and we appreciate your being here and taking the time, uh, especially as you recover yourself from the surgeries. Uh, the, Dr. Moore has given you an idea of the extent of traffic crashes and how they affect the community. Our next speaker is really, I think, can speak to that from a personal level. Stephanie Rodin has been through uh, has been through this in a very, very personal and life-changing way. And I'm going to call her up now. She's used the tragedy that she's been through to do so much good uh, through her work with Mothers Against Drunk Driving and other groups. She's got a great story to tell, an important story to tell, a sad one to tell, but one that's ultimately uplifting. So, Stephanie, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi, my name is Stephanie Ronan. I've called Rocky Mount my home for the last 20 years. My two kids grew up here and they both graduated from Nash Central High School. And I spent almost 11 years working at the eye care center as an optical technician. This community is my home, and I am grateful to be with you this evening. I want to talk about something that hits close to home, literally. The story I'm about to share happened just 30 minutes from where we're sitting right now. It's a story that can easily happen to anyone in this room. September 28, 29, 2018, I was driving home from a friend's house in Wilson County. It was a regular night, nothing special. I was driving on East Downing Street, headed home. When the blink of the eye, the blink of my eye, everything changed forever. I was told that a pickup truck was going 55 miles an hour, had crossed over the center lane, and hit me head on pushing me 500 feet in a ditch. I later was told that the Contentnia and Rockridge Volunteer Fire Departments had to use the jaws of life to cut me out of my SUV. I was then life flighted to Greenville um, to bite it, where I spent the next several months fighting to recover. Now let me share something with you that's hard to believe. The average impaired driver has driven drunk 87 times before ever getting caught. 87 times. That means that the drunk driver that crashed into me was likely driving on our roads, risking other lives again and again, 
before I finally destroyed mine. I suffered multiple injuries, hardware in my neck, both of my legs, foot and ribs, had a traumatic brain injury, and one of my eyes had crossed, causing me to see double. I now have a permanent visual impairment that makes reading things like this tonight challenging. I survived an internal decapitation. It's a rare injury that only 25% of people survive. The man that did this to me was driving on a suspended license. Uh, he was impaired. He got arrested three weeks prior to my crash. <clears throat> he had a he was charged with an alleged DWI, which later was thrown out. When I finally came home to the life I knew, uh, when I finally came home, it was a different life than I knew before. I came home through a wheelchair ramp a hospital bed in my living room. My son Noah had just turned 19 and had to step up in ways that no teenager should ever have to. My daughter Jenna had to grow up overnight. Even our dog had to live with a neighbor to avoid risking any injuries of her jumping on the hospital bed. I also had a nurse's aide that came seven days a week to do tests like bedside bathing helping me dress, and feeding me breakfast. This isn't just my story. It's a story that could easily be yours or someone you love. Every time you get behind the wheel or let a friend do it, you're gambling with lives. And it's not just about innocent people. It's, <clears throat> excuse me. It's not just about you. It's about innocent people on the road who could end up like me. I'm here tonight to ask you to do something that could save lives, maybe even your own. If you're going out to drink, make a plan. Assign a designated driver, call an Uber. Also, it's important to talk to your kids early about the dangers of driving under the influence. Don't wait until they're in high school because chances are by then they've already have experienced alcohol. One person's choice to drive impaired didn't just change my life, it devastated it. I can't work anymore. I live with pain every single day. But my story, if my story can make this one person think twice before getting behind the wheel drunk, then maybe I can find some purpose in this pain. So please, if you remember one thing tonight, is plan ahead. And if you see someone driving erratically on the road, don't hesitate to call 911 for an emergency or Star HP for Highway Patrol. You can save a life, and that life could be yours or someone you love. Thank you. All right, guys, so we're going to move on to the next portion um, of the agenda, which is we're going to do some uh, breakout sessions. So I'm going to just treat you guys like I treat sort of my students during my college classes. So we're going to um, play what's called Four Corners. And so we're all going to stay in this room, but everyone's going to go to a different corner and discuss each question with your corner group. And then we will have time to share out what your corner group discuss. Now, if you're at a table that's pretty homogenous, break yourselves up, right? Everybody go to a different corner. Okay, so I'm gonna give you about two minutes to go to either the back left here, the back right, or the back left here and the back right. So get some blood flowing. Fine as well. Don't feel like you need to bring your stuff. 
Don't be shy. Yeah, come on over. 